As the impeachment trial of President Trump nears an end, we'll talk about what it means in this election year and beyond. And will Governor Whitmer's plan B be enough to smooth the roads and soothe the voters? We'll dig into the state of the state. Today is Sunday, February 2nd, 2020, and this is Flashpoint. Happy Sunday morning, everybody. I'm Jason Colthorpe and welcome to Flashpoint. Devin's off for the week. Closing arguments begin tomorrow in the Senate and President Trump's acquittal is all but assured later this week. Right next door in the House, the president will deliver his third State of the Union address in a particularly charged political environment, although it seems like we say that every week now. We finally get some official numbers to count tomorrow as Iowans will head to the caucuses. It's the first time this group of candidates will be ranked in real life by real voters instead of in the polls. And just in case you forgot how important Michigan is for whoever plans to spend the next four years in the White House, we'll talk about the two big things that happened this week that could make the Great Lakes state the greatest state to take. It was also a week that saw the governor deliver her second state of the state address and her second promise to fix the roads. We'll break down her plan that is already in action. We'll also look at the other goals she set forth in her rather short 40 minute speech. We'll discuss all of that with our panel this morning and maybe get some Super Bowl predictions. It is Super Bowl Sunday. It all starts right now on Flashpoint. And again, happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Super Bowl Sunday and Groundhog Day. Joining me at the round table today, our former state senator and now with the Thomas Group Consulting, Buzz Thomas. Next to him is Tori Sachs, the executive director of Michigan Rising Action. Also, Zoe Clark is co-host of It's Just Politics on Michigan Radio. And Mike Bishop is, of course, former U.S. Congressman. And before that, Michigan Senate Majority Leader in the State House. Guys, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Happy right. Super Bowl so, Sunday. Uh, somebody mentioned we actually may have seen the sun on the way in this morning. What a day. I can attest. <laughs> I saw a giant bright orb. I yeah. think I saw a shadow, but <laughs> unlike the groundhog, unlike the groundhog. Uh, let's start off light with impeachment. Uh, we had the vote uh, that this whole thing was building up to on Friday and it ended up being 51-49. No witnesses, no documents. Uh, what happened afterwards I thought was interesting. Senator Lamar Alexander said, and, and other senators said this is he's kind of speaking for all of us on the Republican side and maybe a lot of America. We, we do think he did something wrong, but it's nothing to be impeached over uh, by virtue of the coin toss. Buzz, I'm going to that we had you won it backstage. Uh, there was no coin toss. But, uh, what do you think? Are they right? Do we should we be leaving this up to the voters at this stage? No. Uh, it, what, a, what, a, what a joke this is. Uh, Senator Alexander, a very distinguished career, uh, as he as he leaves office, says, you know, the the Democratic uh, uh, leaders proved uh, their case for Article One, uh, but this is not this is not, does not rise to a level of impeachment. Uh, it's it's just it, 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 I think it's a disaster for the institution of the Senate uh, and very bad for the government of the United States of America. Uh, it's a it's a horrible day, and the fact that we're all talking about that Wednesday will be a foregone conclusion uh, that the president will be acquitted of this in the Senate. The fact that we saw. Uh, senators playing with little spinners or wearing uh, wear, wearing khakis and reading uh, re reading things and not paying attention to the trial before them is uh, is a horrible uh, a horrible moment for our country. Mike, what did you think? Do you think this went the way it was going to the whole time? Was this a foregone conclusion? The uh, the impeachment itself came to the Senate in a way that uh, was unworkable. It uh, there was no way that the Senate was going to be able to have a functional trial with an indictment was what it was that uh, did not produce any impeachable offense now i i think it's a joke too i think the house handled this incredibly bad uh, i think they've wasted a bunch of time that should have been spent on things that are important to this country and the future of this country they have divided this country now to the point where i don't know how we get back and they have set a precedent with impeachment that is dangerous for this president but many presidents in the future. And I say to all of those out there who believe in this process, who have seen it and want it to go further, uh, to be careful because this can be applied to a future president by a future opposition party. Zoe, what do you think? 
I think we find ourselves in a historic moment, and yet I also think that when you're on the ground and talking to folks who are at the grocery store who are pumping gas, this is not top of mind. Um, I think when you are in a Washington bubble or focused as the four of us around this table, as your guests are, uh, every moment, every little bit of minutia we are focused on, but I think a lot of voters are ready to move on. A lot of voters are frustrating and see this as just uh, one more uh, step on the ladder of the chaos that they, they feel is coming out of D.C., whether you are for or against impeachment, acquittal or uh, removal, uh, that a lot of folks just look at this as this is just one more reason of feeling like uh, it is a circus in, uh, in D.C. And, Tori, I want to get your thought on it, too. It, but that also leads me into uh, the next part of this, which is if you were advising the president, he's got a State of the Union coming up. Would you advise him to, hey, let's move it along, the voters are tired of this, or, or what would you say, what would you advise him to say in that situation? I think the president is going to talk about the things that he's been doing. He was just here to, after he signed the USMCA, the best trade deal that we've seen in my lifetime for Michigan manufacturing, for Michigan farmers, mm -hmm. for trade, for expanding, for to continue the growth in the economy. Opioid overdeaths are down. Um, they've really been focused on those issues that we're talking about that, that people care about in Michigan, the tax cuts. And I do think I'd have him call out, and I'm sure he will, the charade that's been going on. Impeachment was a foregone conclusion when people like Rashida Tlaib got elected on impeaching the president, right? They went through three different, four different scenarios that they tried to impeach him on. I think that was a foregone conclusion. And I think that people are going to be upset that Congress could have been working with the president on other things like lowering prescription drug costs instead of focusing on impeachment. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit more about Michigan in a second. Let, let's switch. Zoe, I want to bring you in on uh, a different state, Iowa. We're finally going to get some actual votes, polls we can finally put aside a little bit. And we have this weekend after this sort of infamous uh, uh, now likely in the history books disaster of a polling with Pete Buttigieg. And, and we are now not going to have one last poll before Tuesday. So as we've been saying, let's leave it for the voters to see. Is there a, one of the Democratic field that you think can survive a disastrous showing in Iowa and still stay in the race? Oh, my goodness. I, I mean, I think, you know, if you're, you're, I would change the question. I'm going to be a politician. Sure. I'm going to still make Tyson pivot a little bit, which is who are the folks that can't, right? And mm -hmm. Amy Klobuchar, um, folks like that. I think it is still in many views a toss-up. And one of the most interesting things, of course, from Iowa is when you historically look it doesn't always portend for who the candidate is going to be. We know Iowa is a, a very white state. Then you go to New Hampshire, uh, that is a very independent state. Then you go to South Carolina. So uh, depending on what happens in Iowa, I don't think anything is a foregone conclusion, but it can be more helpful uh, to a candidate than it can sure. hurt. And again, as someone like an Amy Klobuchar, you know, a Pete Buttigieg who has talked so much about his ground game in Iowa, trying to kind of remodel the Obama ground game if he doesn't come in the top three you know it's going to be really difficult right. for him to continue tough to make money that way mm -hmm. right. what do you think about Iowa I think it's a great conversation starter Iowa's notoriously uh, known for not picking the right candidate ultimately but it's a good conversation starter and Iowa's great because it, it begins with the people you talk to individuals you you have a chance to every candidate can go talk to they can literally talk to every single citizen of that state yeah. it's the way that process works so i like that for that reason but it is not an indicator of what's going forward i think bernie sanders uh is going to win this thing and he uh it's going to be a shocker but i, I really think he's going to win it do i think he's going to ultimately be the candidate probably not but it's a conversation starter. What do you think? What do you see happening in Iowa, Buzz? Well, I don't think that, uh, to Zoe's point, I don't think that this ends anyone's campaigns. Uh, I'm, I'm very intrigued to see how Vice President Biden does. Uh, I think he needs uh, more, more so than Mayor Buttigieg uh, a stronger performance uh, so that he doesn't lose his base. Uh, I think uh, one of the big losers through impeachment was uh, the Klobuchar campaign. Uh, she, her campaign certainly seemed to have momentum brewing and now hasn't been able to campaign in, uh, in Iowa. So she might get a do-over. If so, so if in fact that she doesn't uh, come in fourth or fifth uh, or, or, or third or better, uh, you know, folks will give her a chance to have a do-over and see what she does in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be fascinating. Um, we've been talking about this for uh, 18 months. A long uh, time, it feels <laughs> like. And so, so I'm really ready to get to uh, election night on Monday and see the results. Real numbers will be really nice to see, right, Tori? Uh, they will, and I think the big takeaway for a lot of people is how far 
left the Democrats have pushed in Iowa, how far some people like Bernie Sanders have pulled the rest of the candidates, Biden, with them to the far left. And I think that'll be an interesting thing to see how that affects but New Hampshire and South Carolina. Isn't that always sort of the primary mm -hmm. system in any election for Republicans or for Democrats that, you know, the primaries pull uh, sort of to the left or to the far right these days? And that's why you see folks becoming, um, uh, going to the left and right and then having to become uh, more moderate in the middle in the general? Well, I worked on Rick Snyder's first campaign in 2010 <laughs> uh, and he was very successful running to the middle. Yeah, although he then split everyone else yeah, who's farther you know, on the right. This, this, this general election is ultimately, I think, going to be about um, who do people like more. Uh, yeah. And so I, I think it will be less about uh, those issues of left and right and generally um, who folks like and are, are, fo are folks exhausted and tired mm -hmm. uh, and, re and ready for a change. Well, what is it? Republicans uh, fall in line, Democrats fall in love. <laughs> right. <laughs> We want to talk about Michigan as well, uh, and we'll probably spill this into the, uh, the next segment as well, but uh, a couple of things happened this week that were big. They announced Governor Whitmer will deliver the State of the Union rebuttal, and immediately President Trump came back to Michigan again. Is that a big deal, Mike? I don't think the two are uh, uh, connected at all. I, I think the president came back to Michigan because he understands how important the USMCA is to this state, and um, this new trade deal is a fantastic trade deal. It's so good that I think they'll use it as a template going forward for other trade deals. My hat's off to Ambassador Lighthizer and that whole uh, trade team for putting together an incredible deal that will be great, not only for our country, but especially for the state of Michigan. So I'm glad that the president came back, and I think uh, he came back because he recognizes that it is and will have a huge impact on our state. Buzz, I'm hearing that's the second time I've heard it's not really a big deal that uh, the governor is giving the rebuttal. Sure is it not? Is. Absolutely it is. Uh, it's, it's a national platform for Michigan. Uh, I think it highlights how important Michigan is to the calculus of who will become the next president. Uh, and I mean, we have to remember that uh, President Trump won Michigan by uh, a little under 11,000 votes. Uh, so this puts a, 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 a bright, shiny spotlight onto our state uh, and to our issues. And it gives our chief executive an opportunity to highlight some of the things that she's working on and some of the things that are, that, that are priorities for Democrats. So it's a one... Yeah. It's a wonderful thing, uh, and I think it uh, does guarantee that Michigan will be, be there at the final bell deciding who the next president is. Tori, we're always important, but does it make Michigan even more important because of these events? I think Michigan's important because Donald Trump focused on Michigan in 2016 and Hillary Clinton didn't. Um, it's interesting to see that the Democrats have learned from that. But I think that people are going to have buyer's remorse at the national level when they realize that Governor Whitmer hasn't really accomplished anything, right? She ran her whole campaign on roads. She gets in her first term and doesn't even put a plan forward that her fellow Democrats in the House can support, right? So she kind of had to go it alone, really take out credit cards. Our state's future, we're going to be paying interest on this, you know, we're going to get three and a half billion dollars in roads and we're going to pay about five or six billion dollars for it. That's not a plan. Right? They're not putting somebody forward who has accomplishments, who has a bipartisan accomplishment to talk about. So I yeah. think they're going to have buyer's remorse. We're going to talk about roads and get the rest of the governor's State of the State address when we come back. By the way, a little fact on the way out, the last Democrat to give the State of the Union rebuttal, Carl Levin, 1984. There you go. From Michigan, that is. We'll be right back. We're the Motor City, so we know a thing or two about cars and car accidents. No one handles more auto accident cases than the 55 lawyers at the Mike Morse Law Firm. So call us today and let's go for the win. 855 Mike Wins. Is your house cold and drafty? Are your energy bills through the roof? With Michigan's winter being so unpredictable, you cannot afford not to insulate your home another winter. Stop bleeding money. Insulate your walls and attic. Cut your energy bill up to 50% with Ace and Sons. Right now at Cattleman's Meats and Taylor, take home a mouthwatering beef chuck roast, only $2.99 per pound. Boneless, skinless chicken breast is now only $1.49 a pound for the family pack. And save big on our Cattleman's Tailgate Bundle, featuring boneless New York strip steak, pork chops, boneless chicken breast, chicken leg quarters, beef hamburger, pork spare ribs, Dearborn brand fresh sausage, and Cattleman's smoked Polish sausage. Isn't life delicious? Served up with It's the last week to nominate your favorites in Local 4's Fan Choice Awards. We're looking for high schoolers in sports, performing arts, clubs, and more. Voting starts February 10th. Go to clickondetroit.com slash 4frenzy. Presented by Project Play. Accidents happen. Cars can be fixed. But what about you? Who's looking out for your damages? 
No one handles more auto accident cases than me. So call me today and let's go for the win. Monday at 5. Vaping almost killed this local teen, but a double lung transplant saved Daniel's life. Now his surgeon has a message. I saw the young man dying in front of me. Find out what shocked even him. The lung destruction was worse than anything else I've seen. What this doctor says too many don't know about vaping and the crusade he's now on to save lives. It's all part of Local 4 and Click on Detroit's continuing coverage of this important issue. Monday on Local 4 News at 5. All right, welcome back and flash pointers. Let's jump into the state of the state address. Governor Whitmer second, uh, which obviously was going to talk about roads and it boils down to a bond proposal that'll cost 3.5 billion. And once it's all paid off about 5.2 billion. But Zoe, let me start with you was we saw what happened. The first plan A, as she called it. But uh, was this the only way? Uh, was the bonding proposal the, bonding the only proposal. way? No. I mean, no, <laughs> she could have come up with uh, a seven cents on the sales tax of gasoline. I mean, no, there, there's a lot of different options. Yeah. And uh, I think really the dichotomy is this a funding solution or a financing solution, right? And that's the conversation that we're going to be having that I think uh, she uh, said up front, look, this is not a way necessarily to raise money or new funding for the roads. This is a financing solution to pay for repairs that uh, haven't gotten done and that need to. Um, and we had also heard trickling down for days and days that this was, you know, bonding was being floated. Um, so I don't think it was a, a shocking surprise. Mm -hmm. And it's something that she's doing from uh, the executive branch and, and talked a lot about that in her 36 minute speech, one of the shortest in recent memory. Um, saying, look, you know, uh, I've tried to work with Republicans. Um, you know, some may disagree that there was, you know, real hard trying to come to, to the table and uh, we can talk about that. But basically she's saying I'm going, you know, the route of the executive branch, very similar to what she did with the admin board and moving money around um, while she vetoed uh, uh, millions and hundreds of millions of dollars after the Republican center a budget last year. It was funny before the show we were talking about just how you guys kind of first came across each other's radar. It was over a run of funding issue for roads in 2012 and again it just shows you and we go way before that but this is a constant battle every year Tori is this this plan what do you think of this plan I think this plan is not a real plan um, they're running ads right now I saw one last night on HGTV one of Whitmer's ads uh, for the roads and they showed this photo of a two-lane road the roads that are going to get fixed with this money are only highways and bridges local roads are not going to get fixed in fact the money that we're going to have to pay back on these bonds is going to take away from local road money so this isn't this isn't a plan she ran her whole campaign on one issue fixing the roads and she got to Lansing and she had no plan that even Democrats could support that's not a plan she needs to come to the table and negotiate I think this Republican legislature is very willing to negotiate to work to put plans forward and we're just not seeing that yet is the Republican legislature willing to negotiate buzz I, I, I don't know what legislature you were watching but that's not the one that I saw <laughs> um, I think this was uh, a decisive action oriented plan by the governor where she could have done no action um, Remember this, we bonded for the creation of the Mackinac Bridge. Uh, so this is, this is a vision. This is saying that we're going to build a 21st century infrastructure actually in the 21st century. And this is going to uh, build uh, state highways and trunk lines and federal freeways uh, that are going to uh, make us uh, an attractive place to live, to work, and to grow businesses and grow economic opportunity. So this is very real. And frankly, the payment of those bond debts, that's less than the actual maintenance that we would be that we would be paying for, uh, uh, for for the cost of the crumbling roads and bridges that we have. So this is a plan and this is leadership. Also, many people might think that they're going to need more money other than this mm, to sure. be able to do this. They'll and you've been in this. Yeah, you've been in this mix. <laughs> yes. How hard is it going to be to get that? First of all, I want to say I wish the governor well, because if she does well, legislature does well, the state does well. So I just think that this tact that they've taken is a bad one. It's more hyper partisanship. She's actually pushed the legislature out of the way now and she says she's going to do it on her own. She's got to work with them somehow. Figure that out. The legislature put forward, a, I thought, a, um, a good faith effort in the last budget for roads. They put a chunk of money in. She subsequently vetoed it, which I still don't understand because that could have been used incrementally to apply to the roads and it should have been. I think the right way forward for any legislature is to use the money that you have 
to pay for roads, and if that means an incremental uh, application to invest in roads in regions at a time, then let's do it that way. But don't bond yourself into such debt that in the future you can't afford that, because I've been through that before mm -hmm. in a state government where you mm -hmm. can't afford it anymore. And then when that happens, then the money that it takes to service that debt gets taken away from the secondary roads, which won't get touched, and right. they'll crumble and continue to crumble. One but of the things that I find so fascinating is that we are having this debate over uh, funding, and um, uh, Mike, I'd love to hear your perspective, because you were in the legislature during you know, the Great Recession, right, when, when Michigan was like $2 billion in debt. 1.87, right. Buzz, right? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, no, Buzz, you too. And, and so it's fascinating to me, as a journalist watching from the outside, not being that it seems to me that the same negotiations when we've got some money, right, when we're not in the middle of a great recession, when we're not in the middle of trying to band-aid through $2 billion, we are having in good economic prosperity. And so this, to me, says it's much more about politics, right, than it is about the economy right now and the inability to come to some um, compromise between both parties, because that is eventually what is going to have to happen to come with a long-term solution. It did feel like it was about politics. She used the phrase, no more games, I'm done playing games. And it did seem, uh, the speech overall, and I want to get everybody's take on this, did it seem a little uh, confrontational uh, with Republicans? It felt like once the initial joke about her uh, about the clothing was out of the way, it, then it just seemed to be a little bit adversarial. Did you think that? I thought it was ironic that she talked about playing games when she was the one that cut funding for people with autism, for veteran services, for opioid addiction treatment, for um, public safety, right? She cut those funding. The legislature sent him to her. She played games with it. I mean, you're talking about people with autism. It's, I don't know. I don't think it was a good leadership at all. Yeah. And I think that is really unfortunate. What, as the speech went, Buzz, did, what did you think of just the, uh, obviously it was short, 36 minutes, I'm sure. Uh, when you guys were there, that would have been just uh, awesome to only have to. <laughs> well, as, 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 yes. as, as a former senator, uh, uh, we sit in the very far corner of yeah. the room. So a 36 minute speech is a blessing. Yes. Uh, because uh -huh. frankly, you can't see the governor. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. most, most of the time you're looking, you're, you're looking at a pillar. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, I, I thought actually the speech uh, was, uh, what was, was actually very full of ideas. And so uh, she talked about healthcare, she talked about education, mm -hmm. she talked about road funding. Uh, and frankly, I think this gives the legislature an opportunity now uh, to work on local roads and, and, to, and to find formulas that work uh, uh, within existing resources to work on local roads. So, so I, I think while, while the speech is being criticized now, uh, I think uh, the meat that was put out on those bones uh, gives the legislature a lot to work forward to. to she get a pass, though. Yeah, to your point, though, it was adversarial. I mean, if you if you look uh, at last year's speech where she uh, talked specifically about each member of the quadrant, uh, the, which is the two leaders in the House and the two leaders in the Senate, mentioned each of them and uh, Mike Shirky's grandkids, uh, mentioned Chris Gregg's husband, cooking, right? It was adversarial, and I think uh, no one should be shocked by that. The past year in Lansing was adversarial. Um, you know, maybe this could have been a restart button, uh, but I don't think anyone who's been watching Lansing for the, the, the past 12, 13 months mm. can say, wow, that they're shocked that this is the point that she we're at. She better figure it out, though, because she's got a budget seat coming up. She's going to have to figure this out. She cannot continue to be adversarial. She's got to put that aside for the good of the state, for the good of the people. This partisanship is antithetical to everything this country stands for, our Constitution, everything the founders stand for. If she does not come together with this legislature and work with them in a bipartisan, not in a, she's Does that mean giving in, Good though? faith. I mean, will Shirky <laughs> good, and Chatfield right. work with Yes. Them? It they means will. everybody's got to give in. You know, it means people have got to come to the table and work together on but, things. But, you know, it's a speech. Uh, and, <laughs> and, 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 and so, so the speech was made. Uh, the, dev the, 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 de the dev the devil will be in the details. So I mean, we both sat through speeches that John Engler gave, uh, uh, state of the state addresses. They were always antagonistic. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, uh, yeah. you roll up your sleeves, right. you go to work, and you do the job that you're elected to do. We'll see what comes yeah, up. That's uh, right. we'll, we'll wrap things up right after this. It's Happy's Pizza and Wings Party. Right now at Happy's Pizza, you can get two large, two-topping pizzas, a 16-piece Happy Wing, and a free two-liter of Pepsi, all for only $29.99. Make everyone happy. Call 1-800-BE-HAPPY or order online. Recent statistics show a large percentage of Michiganders can save over $1,000 a year by refinancing. Call 248-308-5000 or chat with us online at davidhallmortgage.com. 
Is your house cold and drafty? Are your energy bills through the roof? With Michigan's winter being so unpredictable, you cannot afford not to insulate your home another winter. Stop bleeding money. Insulate your walls and attic. Cut your energy bill up to 50% with Ace and Sons. You're all set to retire. You have your home paid off, money in the bank, and sound investments. But if you're not careful, all the things that you work so hard for can disappear. At Samasco Financial, we'll help you prevent that. We go beyond ordinary asset management. We'll safeguard everything that you have by creating a plan made specifically for you. How much can you afford to lose? Nothing. Protect the people that you love and the things that you have. Call Samasco Financial today. It's Happy's Pizza and Wings Party. Right now at Happy's Pizza, you can get two large, two-topping pizzas, a 16-piece Happy Wing, and a free two-liter of Pepsi, all for only $29.99. Make everyone happy. Call 1-800-BE-HAPPY or order online. Help Me Hank is committed to defending the environment, and he continues to dig deeper on his toxic ooze investigation. Somebody needs to be held responsible for the lack of work that was done. Violation after violation, yet nothing is done until ooze is coming out of the building in 2019. Yep, completely agree. Right now, crews working on cleaning up this mess. We've removed 11,000 gallons of contaminants so far. Local 4 and click on Detroit. Uncovering the stories, fighting for change, getting answers. back with breaking news. I'm being told the Lions are not playing in the Super Bowl today <laughs> as we pour the salt in the wound. We have just a few seconds. I wanted to get everybody's Super Bowl prediction. Tori, who do you like today? Uh, I'm going to go with Anthony Zettel and all my friends in West Branch. He's an Ogama Heights High School graduate. He's playing for the 49ers. And a oh. former Lion. Of course, there's too many of them in this game. Who do you like, Buzz? <laughs> Almost Tiger Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, boy. It's <laughs> going to be an exciting one. I, I think it's going to be a barn burner, and I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs because they haven't won in 50 years. And I, I feel their pain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Maybe it'll be yesterday. <laughs> Zoe thinks it's going to come down to the trenches, defensive line versus offensive line. Am I right? That I couldn't have said it better, and uh, the commercials. That's right. We're going <laughs> to watch the commercials. Mm. Thanks to the roundtable and all of you for watching. Meet the Press is next. We'll see you later.